Today we are going to discuss about plants and animals and their conservation. So we discussed many things in this class in different lessons about plants and animals. The cell structure of plants and animals, the reproduction in plants and animals, especially in animals. And uh, the production of crops, how to grow plants or crops, different kind of things. Now we are going to discuss about the conservation of plants and animals. So why we need to conserve the plants and animals? Naturally, in nature, there is a natural system in which different species are controlled. Their growth patterns are controlled. When the setup, when the living things on this planet are living naturally. But humans, they made a lot of changes on this planet. Because of the human activities, there are some changes brought into the natural setup. So it leads to extinction of disappearance of certain plants and animals. Naturally, whatsoever the forest area or forest land is present on this planet is gradually reducing. So how it can reduce? How the forest can reduce? It is because of a factor called deforestation. Deforestation. That means removing the forest. Okay, we'll see what are the reasons why we are removing the forests. So due to this deforestation, the natural forests are depleting so, again the humans, they are taking care of plants and animals, they are conserving. In the idea of conserving the plants and animals, they are setting up national parks. Sanctuaries. Biosphere reserve. Likewise, so these are the places where the plants and animals are reserved, protected by the government. So why the government has to protect if it is naturally natural setup, why can't we leave the natural forest? It is not happening. From one side because of the human activities that is in the view of development progress, we are cutting down the forest that is the deforestation. So as the forests are depleting, so many plants and so many animals are becoming extinct, disappearing from our sight, totally from this planet. To protect that endangered, endemic species, these national parks, sanctuaries, biosphere reserves are set up. We will see what are these later. Now let us see the reasons for deforestation. We need more land, the population is growing up, the demand for food grains is growing up. So we need more land for cultivation. So for the purpose of cultivation, the forest land is cleared by deforestation. So that is for the purpose of cultivation agriculture, they are clearing the forest land. And second thing, for houses and factories, to building up factories and houses, industries, forest land is cleared. To build a reservoirs, to reserve the water for irrigation purpose, to make a reservoir, many of the forest lands are cleared. So here it is a social issue. The people demand for a irrigation project because they want water irrigation for their crops. So the tribals, they don't want to lose the forest. They will fight for that. Don't build that irrigation dam. We can take one example. In Andhra Pradesh, Polavaram project. So this Polavaram project, if it is built, there will be so many tribals and lot of forest area will be submerged under water. So the tribals and other people are opposing that not to build the project, irrigation project. But the farmers are demanding for an irrigation project for more production of crops and more better irrigation facilities. So we cannot uh, justify this as it is having two ends. 
but see that a because of uh, such kind of uh, social issues or for the social development or economic development economic progress of the community that there is a disturbance to the natural setup like forests so houses and factories for this purpose also the forest land is cleared and for furniture and wooden products the forests are cut for wood wood is used for furniture it is used for paper it is used for different other purposes so for that the forests are cleared and other thing is the natural calamities like forest fires so these forest fires destroy forest in large quantity and sometimes severe floods also will be responsible for the damage of forest so that is a natural one but uh, above these three points are because of the human intervention human activities so because of all this the forest is being cleared the deforestation is taking place so that is the reason why we are putting our efforts again the other end some people are looking for social progress social growth economic development they are carrying out all these activities and cutting down the forest but from the other side the scientists are telling that if you do so we will lose so many plants and animals so we have to protect we have to conserve them so they are asking for the government to set up a national park a sanctuary a biosphere reserve so why these three names are given for the same purpose you see national park is set up in a specific area to protect endangered animals this is smaller compared to sanctuary so national park is a place where animals are protected in sanctuaries animals as well as with their natural habitats are set up so the animals they live in a, not in an artificial condition in not in an cages they live freely in their natural habitat so sanctuaries are much bigger than national park and biosphere reserve is a very large area which is marked that means a big part of the forest is left untouched that means left free from human activities so in that plants and animals live freely and along with that certain humans also live in the forest we call them as tribals so the tribals also they carry out their natural life in that biosphere reserve so in this way certain parts of the forest is marked as a national park or a sanctuary or national parks or sanctuaries are set up and biosphere reserves are left untouched by human activities to conserve the plants and animals so in this chapter we are going to learn about the deforestation in the national parks sanctuaries biosphere reserves and which plants and animals are um, becoming extinct and what uh, sort of care is taken by the government organizations or ngos to preserve to conserve these plants and animals so we have seen what are the reasons for deforestation why the forests are being cleared because of the human uh, wants we need more land for agriculture we need more land for uh, industries and many other purposes so it is all insufficient how much ever so we are uh, we are uh, searching for a land on other planets also because the space on this earth is also not sufficient for the human activities so it is endless but because of that what is happening what are the consequences the plants animals even the humans on this planet are facing the first thing is the increased level of carbon dioxide because of the deforestation the carbon dioxide levels are increasing why they are increasing because plants and trees are responsible for absorbing the carbon dioxide by photosynthesis so as there are less forest then the carbon dioxide is not absorbed which is released by the human activities again by the factories or by the industries or whatsoever so this carbon dioxide is not properly absorbed by the plants because the number of plants is reduced that forest is reduced that is by the deforestation so as the percentage of carbon dioxide is increased in the atmosphere it leads to a condition called global warming global warming means the temperature on the planet is raised because of the deforestation 
So because of deforestation, CO2 levels are increased. CO2 levels are increased. The high amount of CO2, it leads to global warming, high temperature. This global warming, it disturbs the water cycle. It disturbs the monsoon patterns, rainfall patterns. We have a specific season, monsoons, when there is rainfall, so by that our crops are planted in such a way. So it disturbs the water cycle, raining patterns. So what happens? It affects the rainfall. Decrease in rainfall or unexpected rains leads to loss to the farmers leads to uh, less production in the crops and high amount of carbon dioxide increases the temperature on the planet which has so many effects on the plants, animals and human beings. Now because of deforestation the second consequence is ground water level is depleted because so forests are the places where there is a lot of vegetation when there is rainfall the rainwater is properly absorbed into the ground because the roots they make the soil loose. There is a lot of humus. So the, ground, the water holding capacity is very high. Water holding capacity. Water holding capacity of soil is very high. When, when there is a lot of vegetation, grass and humus in the soil. It is possible only in the forest. If forest land is cleared, the soil is open. When the soil is open, what happens? Erosion takes place. The top soil, it will get eroded if it is open. If it is covered by vegetation, trees and plants, the roots held up the soil. So no soil is eroded when it is a forest. When the forest is cleared, the soil get exposed to wind. Wind can take away the topsoil. The soil is exposed to water. Water can take away the soil. As the topsoil is removed, there is no humus. So the soil, it loses its fertility. And the soil, it becomes, it uh, goes to a condition called as desertification. Desertification. Means like a desert it becomes. So, the groundwater level decreases because of deforestation. At the same time, Topsoil erosion. The, if the topsoil is eroded, it leads to a condition called as a desertification. It becomes like a desert. So, it is connected again to groundwater level. We will see how. Now, let us see that how this desertification is linked to low groundwater level. As the desertification takes place, as the soil, the topsoil is eroded, the water holding capacity of the soil decreases. The texture, the color, the natural texture of the soil is lost. So when there is rainfall, the water is not filtered down. Infiltration rate is decreasing. So the water will not go down to the ground. ground. So the groundwater level is decreasing. See that the topsoil erosion is leading to desertification. This desertification leads to low groundwater level. So these are all one to other interlinked. Now you can see here, the global warming leads to rainfall. If the rainfall disturbance, the rainfall patterns are disturbed. If it is heavily rainfalls, it leads to floods. If the rainfall is very less, it leads to drought, a condition. Less water or water scarcity, rainfall scarcity, drought or floods. So in this way, the consequences, they cause problems one interlinked with other. Whatsoever, because of all these, Especially humans are affected, their lifestyles are influenced there, the living patterns are influenced there, many plants and animals are also influenced. So these are the consequences of deforestation. So we have discussed about the consequences of deforestation. So the deforestation, we cannot totally stop it because economical growth, commercial growth is very important for the mankind. We need in, uh, more and more land because there is a huge demand for the food grains. The population is growing up. But if we do so and totally clear up, clear up all the forest, then we will not be able to any show any diversity to the coming up future generations. All the plants and other animals will become extinct, totally disappear. 
so there is a need to conserve the plants and animals forest and wildlife so there are certain steps taken by the people voluntarily or certain non government organizations naturalists who love the nature who work for the nature voluntarily and even certain government agencies they all set up a reserve some places as national parks as we discussed it before national park sanctuary and bio sphere reserves i already told you the difference between the national park sanctuary and bio sphere reserve so these places are reserved the government it lays some policies it will keep some rules some methods some laws so by that this is protected or preserved if anybody does any other human activity which is abandoned in these areas they will be given legal punishment there are certain forest laws so by that the people are punished are put some fine accordingly so by that the particular areas are preserved conserved and the wild the wildlife which is there in the particular areas is protected in the national parks in sanctuaries and biosphere reserves so the government the government agencies as well as many of the non government organizations and many of the volunteers and all these are commonly putting their efforts as they know the consequences of this deforestation so to reduce the impact and to conserve the wildlife and to conserve the forest they are all working for this national parks sanctuaries and biosphere reserves now let us know what is this national park in detail and sanctuary and uh, biosphere reserves now let us see a biosphere reserve what is a biosphere reserve so it is a very large area of the forest it is marked as a protected area so in that protected area special rules special policies will be applied so there freely humans cannot take up their activities they cannot clear the land biosphere reserve is a very large area compared to sanctuary and national park the biosphere reserve it consists of flora and fauna different plants animals and microorganisms and biosphere reserves also contain the naturally habitant people called tribals tribals are naturally habitant in forest so the culture of that area is also maintained tribals are carrying out a similar or a same culture from generations to generations so their culture is not changing like our civilized uh, modern world day to day our culture is changing day to day our fashions are changing we are changing our clothes we are changing our appearance our beard style mustache style hair style so day by day it is all changing the trends but tribals are not like they are following or continuing their tradition their traditional practices and their traditional uh, appearance dressing and all so they have a particular culture they are carrying that culture generations to generations till now so that culture is also maintained in this biosphere reserve plants animals and microorganisms so the natural setup just like a forest how the natural setup is likewise it is maintained a biosphere reserve is a source of biodiversity naturally you can find a wide variety of plants animals microorganisms and all the living creatures and uh, the total natural forest setup we can see in a biosphere reserve one of the example is pachmari biosphere reserve a biosphere reserve is a very large area it may contain some sanctuaries and national parks so this pachmari biosphere reserve it consists of one national park one national park called satpura and two sanctuaries bori and pachmari these are these two are the sanctuaries so in this way a biosphere reserve is a very large area and it is a source of biodiversity where plants animals and their natural habitats everything is protected so now let us see what is flora and fauna i already 
just use the word flora and fauna what is the flora and fauna of our biosphere reserve so now let us look at the flora and fauna of this pachmari biosphere reserve this is the example we have taken here so if you go to this biosphere reserve you could enjoy the flora and fauna here the names are given you know the flora means the plants and trees and flo fauna means the animals different animals that live in that particular area if you see the trees salt trees teak trees jamun trees silver ferns and arjun these kind of trees we can see in this pachmari biosphere reserve and we can see that animals like chinkara blue bull and uh, barking deer cheetal a leopard wild dog and wolf these kind of animals we can see here so this is the flora and fauna of this pachmari biosphere reserve so now we are going to talk about endemic species endemic species of pachmari biosphere reserve so this is an example we are considering here let us understand what is an endemic species if any plant or any tree or any animal is exclusively found in a particular area or a zone a state or a country you call it as an endemic species of that zone right so when you talk about australia you uh, you will say that kang kangaroos yes kangaroos are exclusively found in australia so whatsoever the plant and animal which is exclusively found in a particular zone you call it as an endemic species species means the same group of plant which can enter breed right so the endemic species of pachmari biosphere here we have separately written the plants and animals here these are the trees of pachmari biosphere endemic species sal and wild mango these two are the endemic species and whereas the animals if you come to the animals bison indian giant squirrel the squirrel which is very big in size and has got a very fluffy tail that is an indian giant squirrel and flying squirrel these are the animals endemic species of pachmari biosphere so these endemic species these kind of rare animals are becoming less because of the human activities or deforestation or other and other reasons so that is the reason these kind of animals are kept in the biosphere reserves that means where these animals are particularly living that areas are marked up and protected so in such a pachmari biosphere reserve that area is protected to protect this endemic species of flora and fauna of this pachmari biosphere reserve so when a particular species is totally disappearing means if it is not in a proper number then you call it as endangered species that means the species number is reducing because we are disturbing their habitat in a natural forest if you are disturbing the habitat and now and then we are listening to the news some cheetah came into the city town into the apartments elephants came into the uh, village and spoiled the houses why the elephants are coming why the cheetahs are coming why the tigers are coming out because you are going to their home and disturbing because we are disturbing their habitat they are coming out they are coming out of the forest to cities and villages it is not their fault we are causing a disturbance in their habitat we are clearing up the forests where do they go so they have no other choice so they are coming to the cities and towns and villages they are being caught up sometimes they are killed brutally so their number is reduced when they have a threat when they have a danger when they don't have their own habitat they cannot breed they cannot reproduce young ones so their number is decreased and the species also the number of that animal particular animal is decreased then it is called as endangered species endangered species so the number of animals and plants which are going to this endangered species list is going up day by day because our activities are going up day by day human activities so the biodiversity of this planet is getting reduced by our activities so so many plants and animals are going to this list endangered species every day this is happening because of the human activities so we have seen about biosphere reserve and different kind of flora and fauna and endemic species and what are endangered species now let us see the wildlife sanctuary so wildlife sanctuary is also the place in which plants and animals are protected by strict laws 
that means the killing of animals in this area is totally prohibited so no person can go for hunting in this area it is a crime in the wildlife sanctuary so what kind of a species we see in indian wildlife sanctuaries black buck white eyed buck elephant golden cat pink headed duck gharial marsh crocodile pythons rhinoceros so these kind of animals are uh, preserved there here these kind of animals are protected in the wildlife sanctuaries of uh, india so in india we have world, world uh, wildlife sanctuaries where there is a um, diversity in the landscape so different types of landscapes are there in some of the some of the wildlife sanctuaries are there in the deltas of big rivers some are having mountains and uh, some are having bushes so in this way different types of landscapes are found in the wildlife sanctuaries and the, some rivers are part of sanctuaries and certain ponds or lakes a few lakes are totally considered as a bird sanctuaries so many bird sanctuaries are there uh, to conserve the diversity of birds and uh, these kind of animals are found in the wildlife sanctuaries now let us look at the national park so national park is the place where different wild animals are protected there so we can see different kind of wild animals here we have uh, just looking at the satpura national park it is a part of pachmari biosphere reserve the satpura is the first reserve park the first reserve park in india the satpura national park is the first reserve park in india so here there used to be once upon a time there used to be animals like lions elephants wild buffaloes and barsinga these kind of animals but they are they are slowly disappearing tiger is the another animal which is becoming extinct means which number is going low down but here the government launched a project called as project tiger to protect the tigers to save the tiger to facilitate the conditions for the tigers to increase their population for breeding and all so here we see that in satpura national park the tiger population is increased the tiger population is increased here there is a tiger reserve where there are more number of tigers a tiger reserve is found here and we find the finest to take in this satpura national park finest to take so such teak trees or teak trees are found in the satpura national park so there are some animals lions elephants wild buffaloes and barsinga these kind of animals are becoming less becoming endangered you know that what are endangered when the habitat is disturbed there slowly the number of animals is decreased there anyhow even though the government protects there there are some people the neighboring people slowly they enter the forest because the forest uh, the reserve forest will be protected by the forest department but they cannot protect from all the sides and all the time sometimes there is a chance of people entering and smuggling the animal products like animal skin animal nails animal teeth uh, such kind of uh, remains of animals which have a good commercial value so in this way they are killing the animals and even our because of our activities and environmental changes and pollution their habitats are disturbed and so they are not able to breed so these are the problems because of which the animals are uh, decreased so sometimes you see from your side you will be killing small animals like ants or uh, any um, kind of uh, grasshoppers you may be catching and you may be playing with or any kind of moths you may be catching so we are killing small animals like frogs and lizards you see that they play a very important role in the ecosystem if you kill a frog it will disturb the food cycle food chain one particular food chain if you kill a rat it will disturb a particular food chain if you kill a snake so unnecessarily we should not kill the animals even though they are small animals they play their part in the food chain or food web every animal has got its importance and its role in the food chain if it is disturbed there the ecosystem is disturbed so the plants and animals and their living environment will be a unit called as ecosystem where the living and non living things get interacted if you are disturbing it if you are killing some animals or some plants the ecosystem is disturbed so by that ultimately if you are killing one particular animal if it is the food for other animal the other animal get starved without food and it will die so unnecessarily no animals should be
killed. Red data book. What is this red data book? So far we are discussing about a term called as endangered species. Endangered <coughs> species. The species which are under danger, that means which are going to become extinct or totally disappeared. The species which number is reduced. When they used to be plenty in a particular zone, now their number is decreased and they are getting disappeared. So that is called as endangered, endangered species. So such endangered species names are listed in a book called as red data book. There are two different types of red data books. For plants, there is a red data book and for animals, there is a red data book. So if any animal is endangered, its name will be written in the red data book. So if you wanted to know about the endangered species, go to this red data book. You need not buy a hard copy of red data book to see that you can go online. You can search for red data book online. You can log into that. There you can browse, you can see the list of endangered species of different zones of this world. So by that you will come to know that how many different creatures, beautiful creatures, plants and animals are getting disappeared because of our uh, human activities and uh, how much natural wealth, diversity we are losing. Migration. When we are talking about this conservation of plants and animals, especially in case of animals, we see this process called as migration. Animals, they live in a particular habitat. They carry out all their life activities in that particular habitat. But certain animals, especially birds, which are living in extreme cold conditions, extreme cold, they migrate to other places, they migrate to other places, to lay eggs because they cannot hatch the eggs at these extreme cold conditions. They need a place where there is proper temperature to lay the eggs and to make the eggs into young ones. So that is the reason they travel a long distance to lay the eggs. When an animal is moving away from its natural habitat to lay the eggs, to give birth to the young ones, then you call the process as migration. It is seen in birds, mostly in birds, most of the birds they migrate. So there are so many sanctuaries in our India, bird sanctuaries, to where the birds they migrate in a specific season from different parts of the world. They can travel across the countries to lay the eggs, to give birth to the young ones. So this is a very unique feature we see in the birds and we see the migration even in butterflies. We see the migration even in fishes. Certain fishes, they migrate from salt water to fresh water to lay the eggs. So some tortoise, certain kind of tortoise and certain elephants. So these are the different animals which will migrate. Right? So here, the birds who migrate to the new location, there they will lay the eggs, they hatch and the young ones will be taken back to their original places. Again, they will go back to the natural habitat, to their natural habitats. This is called as migration. So for these kind of migratory birds, some bird sanctuaries are set up in India. And different uh, bird sanctuaries are there where different kinds of birds, they come. Naturally, they relax and they give birth to the young ones. Certain birds, they visit certain villages particularly. So these villagers understand their importance. They give privilege to the birds coming. They do not harm them and they will provide conditions. They provide the proper conditions. Sometimes birds may not go to forest to lay the eggs. They may go to some places, some villages. There are certain villages in India where the people, they will see that these migratory birds are their guests and they will give that uh, hospitalization, hostage, provide conditions. They do not harm them. They lay their eggs and ones. they will carry back to their home. So this is all about the migration. So when these birds are migrating to new places to lay the eggs, if those places are disturbed or damaged, then their population will decrease. Many birds, different kind of birds, they migrate to Koleru Lake in Andhra Pradesh. So this Koleru Lake is damaged, polluted, destroyed, occupied, used for agriculture. So because of all these reasons, the number of birds that come to this Koleru 
lake is getting reduced that means the bird population is decreasing so to the places to which the birds are migrating those places are to be reserved and those places are to be protected for the to prevent the extinction of the bird diversity so now see what are the other things that can be done to conserve the wildlife and plants one is recycling of paper the other one is reforestation these two contribute to the saving of forest because if you save the forest if you avoid the deforestation then easily you can conserve the plants and animals that is the fact we have learned in this lesson whatsoever the topics discussed all the topics are telling that forest is very important to maintain the wildlife and the plant diversity so you need to protect the forest how can we protect the forest we have to decrease the necessity of trees for different commercial purposes like paper paper is extensively used you are using lot of paper you are wasting lot of paper you are doing and doing so much of rough work drawings scribbling scrapping tearing right so we have to save the paper paper is so precious of course you may be affordable to buy a book for a 30 rupees or 40 rupees you are enjoying the paper you are writing drawing everything okay that is fine but at the same time when you are tearing a paper you should be responsible see that 17 fully grown trees fully grown trees trees are used to make 1 ton of paper so 1 ton of paper to make that 17 fully grown trees are used trees cannot be directly made into paper lot of chemicals are used lot of energy is used it should be done in a factory lot of electricity is used so in this process lot of energy is wasted so after all this the paper is produced so at the cost of green trees you see that how much time it will take to grow 17 trees can you do that no we cannot do that always we see that in one one man mahotsava or certain kind of occasions where we plant the trees just we plant a sapling but practically is it possible to see that the sapling is grown to a full tree no very difficult because they take very long time you need to be very patient to grow a tree you need you need a space to plant it and you need to take care of it till it is grown so growing trees is very very important and at the same time if you conserve the paper you recycle the paper reuse the paper one side of the paper is used you can use other side your father may be taking print outs of something some of his work on one side the other side you can use it as for rough work do not waste the paper reuse the paper recycle the paper do not throw the paper in drainages open drainages do not the paper outside do not tear and throw the paper outside sell it to the vendors who will purchase the waste paper they will recycle it they use the paper to make new paper recycled paper so by doing this you are saving energy you are saving the cutting down of trees and you are contributing to control the deforestation and uh, use plastic items instead of wooden items wooden furniture so by that the requirement of wood gets reduced and nowadays refabricated wood is available if you are going for a plain wood you have selected some take or some saw something you wanted a plain wood furniture so many trees are cut right so there are so many alternatives by choosing those alternatives by making such a eco friendly decisions everybody you your parents your community your friends myself every one of us can contribute to control the deforestation so all these are the efforts to control the deforestation not only reducing the deforestation we have to look at the reforestation also growing more and more plants and trees so we can plant trees during the occasions like one mahotsava and other occasions see that more number of plants are planted that is from our side the government must make acts it should allot some funds for the reforestation the forest area which was cleared it should be reforested again so that should be done by the government so indian forest act which prevent the unnecessary cutting of trees and reforestation of the plants in the deforested areas the soil and the empty land should not be left barren because we discussed what are the consequences 
the top soil will get eroded so by the fertility of soil decreases so by the water holding capacity of the water decreases so by the ground water level decreases so it leads to drought and the severe water scarcity conditions desertification to avoid all those more and more trees ought to be planted how much of forest we are cutting down that much of forest has to be reforested but you think whether it is practically possible or not it may be practically possible or not everybody must show concern everybody must demand for a green future because in future whatever the future generations you people growing up so when you grow up you may not be able to see many kind of plants and animals which you are seeing now now everybody must be aware of this thing that is the reason why this lesson is given to you to implant certain thoughts in your mind that we should be responsible but as a children what you can do yes from your side you can do yes from your side you can contribute you conserve the paper you plant the trees whenever possible these two things you can do you can ask your parents not to um take decisions which will favor the deforestation you ask your parents eco friendly decisions take eco friendly decisions when they are buying some item so when they are taking some decision when they are buying some furniture or some kind of item you ask them to take an eco friendly decision right so you yourself you can advise if you are asking for more and more paper more and more books if you wanted to scribble and tear more books you are contributing to the deforestation see that you, from your side your decisions are not contributing to the deforestation right you can educate your parents also and your friends also so by that you will develop certain awareness about the conservation of plants and animals and our responsibility and the importance of forest and how it is important to have a sustainable growth and a sustainable healthy life on this planet